I'm Jeff Tamblin, and I'm a photographic artist. So I've got five pieces that I'll be showing here at 80 Santa Fe, and uh, excited to be in the show. I've been in, involved in the arts my entire life, but uh, and I've kind of secretly always wanted to be a photographer. But um, it's it's only been the last four years or so that I've been much more intentional about doing a lot of photography and I kind of discovered a style that captivated my interest and so that's one of the things that's propelled me forward. The art scene here is uh, kind of starting to boom, which is wonderful. The, there's a lot of support for artists. There's at least three or four um, pretty well-funded arts organizations that hand out grants and provide uh, studio space and uh, hold exhibitions and uh, even uh, do classes for artists on how to be better at the, the business of art and, and so forth. Um, there's, there's a tremendous amount of support now in a lot of places like 80 Santa Fe that are just more interested in kind of being a part of all that and want to uh, help artists move along in their careers. and. That's very exciting. This is, I think this is the best, I'm a native of Kansas City and I think for me, this is the best time I've ever seen in the city. I started going to a couple of sort of regional photography clubs for a little while and that was, that was fun, that was interesting. Uh, there wasn't, these, most of the photographers although they were really, really good photographers, uh, were not particularly interested in my unusual style. And uh, I didn't get a whole lot of support for that. Not, there wasn't, you know, nobody was, was angry with me or anything. Nobody was resentful, but, but they were, uh, uh, they just didn't really know what I was trying to do. And uh, so I kept looking around and I, I finally landed at uh, the Kansas City Society for Contemporary Photography which is a wonderful organization with about 140-ish members. And um, I, I joined the board uh, after being a member for about a year. And it was right during the pandemic. So there was, we, the, the group wasn't doing a lot of activities and, and we're still kind of trying to ramp up again. But there's a lot of wonderful photographic artists involved in that club. And they're very interested in all styles of work. Uh, and, and breaking artistic uh, conventions and so forth, which is something I've always been interested in uh, my entire life in the arts. Uh, no matter what form of art I've been doing, I've always liked to you know, sort of push the edges. I, since I don't have any formal education in photography or visual art, um, it's hard for me to compare myself to anybody else and kind of know, you know, but, but for me, this is, you know, one of the most serious endeavors I, I've ever done because I just really love what I'm doing. I love the pictures that I make. Uh, I feel like a lot of it really comes out of my heart and uh, my intuition. I'm really, um, embroiled in it and I do work on it every single day. Uh, I recently uh, was involved in a program called Artist Inc. that's put on by a Mid-America Arts Alliance and uh, that's an eight-week program uh, where you network with a lot of other artists and kind of learn how they sustain their own businesses. Uh, it's, it's a fascinating piece. That was really, really helpful to me. Uh, just being in contact with other artists seeing what other artists are doing and more it's funny but the more you you get into it the deeper you get into it the more all that means to you as an artist the more you can learn from other people it's like your your learning capability is only this big when you first get started but it grows a lot more as you get into it because you get more comfortable with learning and with what you already know There's a lot of things that I need to work on pretty much on a daily basis from you know, website, social media, uh, entering uh, competitions or applying for exhibitions. Um, and then there's just a whole lot of doing the work of art where you are out looking for stuff to shoot. With a lot of other photographers who do street work and so forth, 
I think they have maybe a little easier time finding subjects than I do, but my, my subjects have to lend themselves to either motion blur or they have to be constructed in such a way that when I uh, move the camera, that'll kind of work for them. And a lot, but a lot of what I do is so random. It's, um, I'm just driven by my intuition and I will look at my work for a little while and if I get a little tired or if I feel like I'm, I'm, I need more of this, it just drives me to the next thing. Gosh, that's such a big topic, but, but to talk about what, what art does for the world is so varied and a lot of people just want something to look pretty in their house or in their office and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, I think also that art has a mission to sort of elevate reality for people so that they don't look at the world the same way. As human beings, we tend to get into this rhythm of uh, taking things for granted and assuming that everything is gonna sort of be the way it was or, you know, or maybe just being afraid of, of the way things are because fear drives a lot of us, especially these days. But, you know, um, what art can do for us is help us to understand that reality isn't boring, that every second of it is absolutely fascinating, and that there's always something new to look at and to understand. And I think art also helps give us courage when we're facing difficulties. Um, I remember uh, when I was really, really uh, uh, sad about my uh, father's death and um, you know, I'd had a lot of conflicts with them and they were just unresolved. And, and uh, I was having a phone conversation with a friend late at night and I was telling her about, you know, my relationship with my dad and how it was, you know, kind of difficult. And she said, oh yeah, like sort of like water over sharp stones. And when she said it, I just burst into tears because she had said exactly the right words to help me, you know, release that feeling and to get comfortable with it and to have it contextualized in a way that could not have been done in any other way. You know, it's just like, that's the power of, of art is it brings us strength and courage and vision in ways that I don't think anything else can. I think it's endemic to the human experience. I don't know if other animals make art, but humans must, we always have. I discovered intuition when I was working in improvisational theater because when you're on stage or even rehearsing with a bunch of other actors and they're um, always, you know, they're doing things around you and they're constantly coming up with creative variations on whatever it is you're, you're embroiled in, whatever scene you're involved in, whether it's comedic or serious or, or just kind of abstract. And, and what's, uh, what was amazing about that was to discover that power of intuition, like how it could connect me with other performers and ultimately with people in the audience because they're drawn in, you know, they, they want to be part of it. They want to be part of what's going on. And so that's kind of the impulse that drives me with art too, is I like to, I, I discovered this aesthetic of making blurry pictures and then I, uh, I just wanted to do more of it because I just love the way it looked. And, and gradually I realized that one of the things that I liked about it was that it takes away some specific details, kind of like, I don't want to compare myself to great painters, but just so for comparison, just for illustrative purposes, when you look at a Monet, you know, if you look at like a picture of his drawings of, of, of a street scene, there's like a little squiggle, but you know it's a human being. <laughs> and you're like, how did he do that? How did he make me understand that this is a human being and where this human being is going? There's even a little bit of intentionality about this. And it's just a little paint squiggle. And so, I mean, knowing that the human mind will fill in the narrative uh, for when it doesn't have one, uh, I think it's really fun to make pictures that take away a lot of specific details, 
but leave a lot of wonderful uh, colors and shapes and a few identifiable features that can kind of spark the viewer's imagination and make them begin to develop because it draws them in. It makes them sort of a collaborator of the artist. And I, I love that. The way I look at it is that everybody has a camera in their pocket these days. I mean, I think there's eight billion people and I think I've heard that there are, you know, something like six billion phones out there in operation. So everybody has the ability to look and document something now. It's the most democratized art form in the history of the world, without question, uh, along with its close cousin video. And, and every minute there are literally jillions and jillions and jillions of things being uploaded onto the internet um, that are very literal in form, very documentary, documentarian. And so um, it's incumbent upon artists not to do what everybody else is doing. It's incumbent upon artists to push that barrier and make people go, oh, I didn't know we could do that. And also just to make them imagine things. And that's, that's what I want is for people to look at the scenes or the moments that I capture and just have some kind of feeling about it. A good example is my wife um, and I were looking at a picture that I had made, a uh, particularly abstract piece, but there was a human form in it. And I told her where I made the picture and she started yelling at me. She actually got angry with me. She said, don't tell me <laughs> where it actually is because she had invested herself in a narrative that she was making up right there. You know, she was and loved that narrative that was happening inside of her. She didn't want it to be interrupted with the mundane facts of reality. And I thought that was a real learning thing for me. So I, I try not to talk too much about what's actually in the pictures and more like try to listen to what the viewers see.